As far back as I can remember, I've always wanted to be an adventurer. To me, this trip was the perfect opportunity to go out and explore and leave reality behind for a while. To just live out a dream. When most people see the ocean, I don't think they realize what it's like being out there. The weather can change rapidly, which can make it harsh and unforgiving. After spending time in these environments, it has given me huge respect for the ocean. Norway has a long history of sailors adventures and explorers, from the Vikings to Amundsen, conqueror of the South Pole. Growing up with these stories gave me an urge for traveling to remote places that have only been seen by a handful of people. I realized that crossing the North Atlantic from the east coast of Canada via Greenland before sailing back home to Norway was the perfect opportunity to do this. The plan was to bring a crew of five good friends and use our 42-foot Swedish-built Nyad as a base for all the adventures that we wanted to carry out during our time here. Because we just wanted to get ready in the morning and be instantly ready to go out and explore. One of my closest friends and fellow adventurer is Sinda, and therefore it was natural to bring him on this trip. Convincing him to join was an easy job once I mentioned Greenland. After some days of sailing amongst all the spectacular icebergs, Sindra came up with the crazy idea that he wanted to climb one. Being aware of the danger and risk of one of them flipping as soon as he got on, he still just had to try, since this was an ice climber's once in a lifetime opportunity. This was one of the coolest moments on the trip. Watching him walk on top of an iceberg the size of a large house was awesome. On the other hand, we were all a bit nervous when we saw him hanging by his ice axes over the inflatable dinghy that was being pushed up and down alongside the iceberg by the swell. Amazingly, he managed to get back in the dinghy without piercing it with his crampons. Once we were back on board, it was time to set sail and move on. We still had a lot to look forward to.
On our journey, we also had the opportunity to visit some old abandoned settlements. All these remote places had one thing in common, and that was the lack of roads connecting them to the rest of the world. The first and most exciting place to visit was Battle Harbour. This was also one of the places that made the strongest impression on us. Battle Harbour had for two centuries been the capital of the Labrador coast. With a population of 350 in the 19th century. Because of the overfishing of cod in the Grand Banks, which was considered one of the largest cod stocks in the world, Battle Harbour lost its income and was completely abandoned in the 20th century, following a resettlement program that moved everyone to denser populated areas. Walking around the historical buildings really put our lives in perspective. We need to take greater care of the natural resources we have and manage them in a more sustainable way, so that the people after us have the same opportunity to enjoy them in the way we have. Instead of just walking around looking at symbols with poor decisions that only benefited the greedy in the past. Putting this place behind us left the entire crew with mixed feelings. Although we had an amazing experience staying there. However, for us, every end is a new opportunity for adventure. And new adventures were waiting. My first impression after being left behind for a five day hike was how remote this place was. You realize you're completely on your own. I remember a sense of freedom that I experienced when arriving there. We were in this beautiful fjord that was only accessible by boat. I had this dream of walking from one fjord to another exploring every mountain and fishing water on the way. The main goal was to just be out exploring in this incredible nature. I still remember walking up this ridge to the top with the most stunning view. I must have sat there for at least an hour. I get inspiration from reading and looking at maps of the areas. But it's when you set your feet on the ground that you really start to feel close with your surroundings. That's when you feel what it's like living. In one way, it's a strange feeling knowing that you're the only one hiking in a certain area. And the knowledge you need to catch the food for the day. Luckily for us, the fishing in these areas was a pure joy and we caught all the arctic char we could eat. In fact, it's in settings like this that I really feel alive. In the evening, we built a small oven 
and clean the beach for all its driftwood for the fire. After this, cooking the char in a wood-fired oven with some seasoning tasted amazing. That was just what we needed after a long day. As mountaineers, there was no question. We had to take a closer look at the inland glacier. It was strange thinking about how we could very well be the first people to have ever walked on the newly exposed mountainside. And in this context, we felt extremely small. After we'd gotten back to the boat from the long hike, we bought the freshest halibut you could ever dream of from a local fisherman who had just caught it with one of his long lines. The food on these trips become really important. It brings the crew together in a special way. When we're not sailing longer stretches, the dinner table becomes the meeting place where good conversations and laughs are shared over a bottle of wine. This is also when we get to reflect on life and plan the rest of the trip. It's the time when we get to just relax and look back at the day that has passed. Because at the end of the day, my definition of success isn't necessarily a price or fame, but to have a good life and be able to say that I do what I love doing. Days went by and our time on Greenland started to come to an end, but we still had one unfinished stretch left. The Prince Christian Sound a 100 kilometer long fjord that was ranked as one of the most spectacular fjords in the world. However, we still had to battle our way through the ice to get through. In the past week, there have been five boats that had to turn around in the sound because of the ice blockage. Luckily for us, we had gotten a good ice report and took our chances. We maneuvered slowly around the ice and were constantly scouting for the best way through. It was a huge relief to see open water just a couple of hundred meters out. The last stretch of ice was a walk in a park compared to what we had already gotten through. We were one of the few sailboats that had successfully navigated through the fjords this year. To me, this is the perfect life. Sailing in one of the most remote areas in the world and combining it with hiking and climbing in the most spectacular mountains I've ever seen. It's an experience of a lifetime. But we still had some rough days of sailing to get home. With strong winds and waves up to 5 meters hitting us hard. 
There is something special about sailing in hard conditions. You just have to adapt and overcome the situation with what you know and have on hand. Honestly, there is no greater feeling than just being out sailing with good friends. And as a group, the experience is strengthened by having shared it. When I look back on the trip and the time we spent on Greenland, we only got a glimpse of what it has to offer. Knowing this has only inspired me more to return and explore even more of the coast and fjords. There is too much to see and do, so it's safe to say that I will definitely be returning. Because for me, the most important thing in life is to fill it with experiences, not things. To have stories to tell and not stuff to show. <laughs>